and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney at uh, Myrick O'Connell. There are a bunch of us, uh, about 70 of us, and uh, about 40 in, in uh, Worcester and 20 in Westboro, where, by the way, my friend Trish Davidson from Ashland and Mark, and, um, um, Mark Terry, also from Ashland, um, work. Uh, and then there are some in Boston. So each of us gets to do what we really like, and I really like elder law, which is why uh, um, I focus on it. But this show is not about law. It's about our, my friends Frank and Mary. If you've been to any of my presentations at the Senior Center, you know Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., that they grew up here. And Frank and Mary want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if they're in Ashland, that means they want to stay in Ashland. They don't want to move far away. So we've always talked about uh, a, we've had a bunch of guests here. My friend Steve Mitchell and I have because I asked Steve to be a co-host because he really does know everybody here. I don't know anybody. Um, and then in the fall he said, so maybe I should interview you because maybe you should just kind of talk about some elder law issues. And we did that last month. Right. But you know, the both of us are big talkers, right? So we kept on talking. And so we didn't, we ran out of time. And so he said, well, we're just going to kind of do some, we'll kind of finish yeah, and, today. And kind of segue. Right. Well, first of all, you know, yeah. always a pleasure being here with you. For, As it is uh, with you. And, happy uh, holidays. Yeah, happy holidays. It's going to be our last show of, of, of 2019. Yeah. And uh, so kind the, of segue. The, 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 the series will be available on DVD, though. You know, we'll, we'll be doing the box set. We'll be, and we'll you know, do, we'll, uh, we'll, you know, we could be getting a Grammy. Who knows? Who knows? Right? Who knows? But, uh, uh, you know, this will be our last show. But it kind of segued nicely into what we started in November, which was a discussion about, uh, you know, what to anticipate as you as you get as older. you get older, right? Um, the last uh, installment, uh, we talked about uh, uh, powers of attorney. We talked about healthcare proxy, and we realized we just tip of the iceberg because right. there's we really didn't get into other issues as inevitably our our lifespan comes to an end. Right. Right. So right. I think that's where we'll we'll start. One of the things I mentioned uh, and asked about, we just didn't have a lot of time last yeah. last uh, episode was uh, uh, the Homestead Act, and you know some 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 background on that and the advisability of, of going in that direction. Sure. So the as brief background, home the home the notion of having a homestead on your property actually is about a thousand years old. It comes from Britain, the original. Um, sense was that you wanted to basically to make it make sure that there was a way that the farmer that was out hanging around and squandering resources didn't throw away the family farm and throw and get the family thrown out in the street and so there was a a there was a a, a law which is, has continued to this to this day that allows you to file a homestead only on your home hence the name only on your home and if you filed that homestead then it keeps creditors of yours um, e even if they've got a legitimate claim against you, and even if they've got a judgment against you in court, right, from me being able to enforce that judgment by actually going to a sheriff and having the sheriff do a sheriff sale and sell the house, right? And, and the, the way it worked actually, um, in its current form, the sheriff in that situation does still have the ability to sell the house, but if he sells it, um, and you've got equity in the house, he has to give you the equity up to a particular amount, right? And as far as seniors are concerned, if there is a husband and the wife in the home, right, um, each of them uh, gets equity of up to $250,000. So if you've got a house, the, the, the first $500,000 in equity, if it gets sold, goes to you. If you're in Ashland, that's a lot of houses, right? So, it, so it's a great form of protection. Um, as a matter of fact, it's such a good form of protection that many lawyers, including all of us at Myrick O'Connell, feel that it is actually negligent for a lawyer, if they're representing you on a purchase or, or, or other transaction, to not right. advise you to get a homestead. Right. But, but what was, I just want to add one thing, though. That said, that said, having a homestead does not keep a creditor of yours from filing a claim on your on your house, from going to court and getting an attachment attaching your house. What it does is it prohibits the, 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 the creditor from actually forcing a sale while you're alive or while your spouse is alive or while your children are alive if they're living there and they're under age 18. Right. 
Okay. But uh, eventually, they can do that in, the enforcement action. So eventually, right? you know, you still owe the money. At some point, the money's got to be paid. It's sooner or later. And, and, and in the meantime, during your lifetime, if you need a mortgage, you're gonna have, they're going to have to deal with that creditor. Right, right. right? Because they, you're going to need to get that So refinance. the process by yeah. which to file for a, yeah. a homestead protection, in yeah. a sense, pretty straightforward and simple. Very straightforward. You can actually go to the state, um, I believe it's the, the, uh, the Secretary of State's website, and download a form, a, a, a homestead form, and sign it and record it. Um, you can mail it into the Registry of Deeds. Um, the recording cost, they've kept it really low, is $35. It's the cheapest document you re can record yeah. in the Registry of Deeds. Lawyers also prepare these. You don't have to have a lawyer prepare it, right? Um, and, and we advise everybody to do it, right. My even, wife and even, I given, just, even given those constraints. Right. Yeah. My wife and I just recently, uh, yeah. when I say recently, within yeah. the last couple of years, went through the process of a will proxy all of that uh, and I bet your lawyer said by the way we did take care of homestead it was yep. a, a very simple as you describe art 35 bucks uh, I had the certificate within I think 10 days yep so yep. it's very very simple so you know to, to just uh, uh, finish up on homestead you yep. encourage that uh, any questions consult an attorney oh yeah talk, you know talk to an attorney and they'll yep. tell you about these and attorneys will typically charge you Little or nothing, right? If we, we know in our office, if people are doing other things, we just do, we don't it's charge anything bundled, extra. Yes. We only yes. just charge for that recording fee, right. which is once again a very cheap recording right. fee. So very it's a very good. good idea. All right. So up to this point, we've been talking uh, about people staying in their homes. Uh, you know, they've been healthy. Uh, uh, everything's going fine. Everybody's goal. Right. Right. Uh, but now, at some point, someone gets sick. And so let's talk about those next stages of life uh, and how you would recommend dealing with that. Spouses, individuals dealing with it. Yeah, so, so these issues, yeah. as you know, I do nothing but elder law. I, I don't think I have a client I was under 55. My median client age is 74. I identify, I'm gonna turn 70 next month, in January of next year. Um, and, and so what I find is that for folks who are heading in their 70s, in their 70s, the, 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 the biggest concern that they talk about tends to change from how do I make sure if we get into an accident we can avoid the probate process to, oh my God, what if I need nursing home care? Now, typically you're only gonna need long periods in a nursing home if you have a disease that causes dementia. That's typically the reason. Although there, and by the way, the average nursing home over 70% of all the people in the nursing home, that's why they're there, right? And so they're concerned about this issue, they're, and they're especially concerned because they hear these ads on the radio or the, the, or the newspapers and it, when folks will say, well, you know, if you're concerned about this issue, you need to try to protect your assets early. The reason for that is um, if you're in a nursing home for more than 100 days, um, Medicare and other health insurance won't cover it. Uh, Medicare, like other health insurance, covers the cost of getting better, not the cost of staying the same. So suddenly, if you're there for a long period, and once again, that's typically someone with dementia, you're on private pay. Private pay around here is gonna cost you order of magnitude $14,000 a month. Well, you can see at that number, things add up pretty quickly, right? Um, and so people are very concerned about that. So what people will hear on the, on the radio or whatever is the only way they can protect against having these, your assets counted if you need to try to qualify for Mass Health, which is the Massachusetts name for Medicaid, which is the only program that will pay for nursing home care, that the only way you can protect those assets is by giving them away typically they'll say to an irrevocable trust, although they can be given to anybody, and waiting five years. Because when you're applying for Mass Health on the application it says, have you made any transfers within the previous five years for less than fair market value, gifts, right? And if you have, then those assets still get counted in terms of deciding whether you can qualify. And in order to qualify, you have to have less than $2,000 in countable assets. So folks will be very concerned about that and very torn because you're, ta you're talking to your lawyer, you're talking to somebody about this, and you're saying to yourself, on the one hand, geez, I feel good, you know? Well, you know and, and if you're Frank and Mary, you're a couple, right? We both feel good. Mm -hmm. 
And, and you're telling me that in order to protect against this possibility that may never happen, right? I have to lose control of my assets. I have to give them to somebody else, either to an individual or to a trustee, typically one of your kids of an irrevocable trust. I can't legally get the assets back. Boy, that's a lot. That's a lot, right? So the main thing for folks to understand is that that rule, the five-year look-back rule, which everyone walks in thinking applies to transfers to anybody, does not apply to transfers to spouses. So I'll often talk to these people and say, now look, look at your assets. Say you got a house, say you've got some money, right? And you're both alive. If one of you goes to a nursing home tomorrow, I can get you qualified for mass, that person for mass health in about two days. And the reason for that is, first, there is no look back period regarding transfers between spouses. Say you're Frank and Mary and Mary goes to the nursing home. On day one, she can transfer all of her assets to Frank and thereby show that she has less than $2,000 in countable assets, which is the, the magic number if you want to qualify for MassHealth. So as far as MassHealth is concerned, that transfer to Frank was not subject mm -hmm. to any look-back period. It could be happening the day before you apply for MassHealth. So now the question is, now Frank's got all of these assets, what's the test as far as Frank's assets are concerned? And there is a test. If you're the healthy spouse, you can own the home no matter what the value, uh, no matter what the equity. You can have rental property no matter what the equity. You can have other cash or cash equivalent assets equal to $126,420. People say, where did these numbers come from? It come from the sky. They, you know, they change every year. It's a, it's, a, it's a federal number, it changes, right? So, what, what, so in Mary's case, in Frank's case, if everything's been shifted to Frank, now the house is safe, no matter what it's worth. The money, he may very well have more than that magic number, $126,420. But what he can do at that point is he can convert that pile of assets into a, a non-countable income stream. Because while the rule is that Frank's assets can't exceed this particular magic number, mm -hmm. he can have infinite income. So on day one, Mary can shift everything to Frank, assuming, by the way, going back to the last time we talked, that Frank's got a power of attorney, because at this point, Mary probably can't sign stuff, so that he, on her behalf, can shift things, right? So then, now Frank's got all these assets, so he's gonna keep, say, $100,000, and, and then take the rest of the money and buy an annuity with it. And, and as long as it is a specific kind of annuity, an annuity that calls for equal monthly payments, over a term that is shorter than Frank's life expectancy at that time, the purchase of that annuity in any amount converts the assets to an income stream. So say Frank has a million dollars and a house in Ashland, Frank and Mary, and they owned everything jointly because their basic plan was if I die, everything goes to my wife, right? So on day one, Mary shifts everything to Frank. Day two, Frank keeps, say, $100,000 buys an annuity for $900,000, calling for equal monthly payments for the rest of his, over a term that is shorter than the, 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 his, the, the his, his life expectancy. <clears throat> the day after he does that, Mary qualifies for Mass Health. At that point, Mary will pay her social security and her pension to the nursing home. Mass Health will pay everything else. She dies, there's no lien on, these, on, on Frank's assets, right? So in the short run, I'll always talk to, tell couples, you've got no problems, right? And the, people are kind of amazed, they just relieve. And therefore, many people will not do anything, right? They'll just say, they'll just go home. But I tell them, I say, you know, if your issue is, and this is true for a lot of people, you wanna protect your spouse. You, 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 you tip most spouses, right? And I know for myself, you know, I think about my wife. I don't worry about me, I worry about her. If I die, I wanna make sure she's safe, right? If you want, if you, if that's the case, if you want to make sure your spouse is safe, then what you do is you have a will that says, when I die, instead of everything going to my spouse, I want things to go in trust for the benefit of my spouse. And you'd name one of your kids or more of your kids as the trustee for that, for the benefit of that spouse, right? If you do that, when you die, all the assets that you own are gonna be immediately safe, non-countable, and non-lienable, 
If, me, if, if I'm Frank, if I die and my wife needs to qualify for Mass Health the next day, she's so depressed because I die that she has a stroke now, she's in the nursing home, she can instantly qualify for Mass Health. No look back periods, none of that stuff. The only thing that, and we were talking about this beforehand, I, and I, that, that you gotta be conscious of once you've done that. And now you're fine, because while you're both alive, this is, there's no issue, right? If one of you gets sick, I always tell people, then call your doctor and then call me. Because at that point, we wanna decide whether we wanna shift assets, right? For example, if somebody, if Frank calls me and says, oh yeah, I find, just found out I got cancer, right? I might die a couple of months, say okay, and you wanna protect your wife, right? So in that case, right now, we're gonna transfer your house and your other cash to you, to you. And they'll say, transfer it to me, but I'm about to die. Why would I do that? Because that's what you have to do. Because if it's in your name when you die and, the, and things flow through your will, then all these assets are instantly gonna be safe for the benefit of your wife. If on the other hand, Frank comes in and says, oh geez, you know, I really got memory problems. I think, it, you know, in the, not right now, but in the longer run, I may need nursing home care. I'll say, okay, in that case, what we wanna do, we wanna transfer everything to Mary because we're worried about protecting you. And, and while you're both alive, that's not a problem. But by transferring things to Mary, we can ensure that if she drops dead, everything's gonna be safe for your benefit, right? So that's, that issue is the most common issue mm -hmm. that, that I talk to older folks about. Now, once again, if you're single, if you haven't done any of that stuff, Frank died and now Mary comes in and says, oh, I got memory problems, what do I do? And she now owns all the assets. Now she's got this problem that she's gonna, if she wants to protect them, she needs to transfer them out of her name. She needs to wait five years, right? right? Which is really a hassle. Yeah, so obviously the point is is the, the pre-planning. I mean, you know, it's just- If you're a how, couple- How critical it is to pre-plan- cri On this issue. Inevitable. On this issue. In, 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 and the inevitable, obviously, is death. It is not necessarily inevitable that you'll go to a nursing home. That's right. But there's, it's like <clears throat> nuclear war. You know, the chances are small, the results catastrophic, right. right? And so if you're worried about this, you don't, the, you know, the message to folks is, if you're a couple, you don't have to lose control of anything now, nothing. All you have to do, though, is get these wills in place so that if at the last minute something happens, we can quickly shift assets yeah. to the correct person, right, in order to protect them. Yeah. It's a big deal. Yeah. So if, and if you're 80, you know, that's a big, 80, 90, that, yeah, that's a real issue. Yeah, so the time to start this is when you're it's when, younger. It's when you're young, it's right. when, it's when, and when you're both alive. Right, and people you're will, both healthy. People will often right. come, you know, leave and say, well, I don't really don't have to do anything. I'll say, you're absolutely you're, you, right. You don't. Just don't die. <laughs> don't die. That's right. right? <laughs> And if you're concerned about, and if you want to protect your spouse and you're worried about that, get those things in place. Because right. the asset shifting is very easy, can be done at the last minute. Yeah. <coughs> and, and really from my <coughs> experience, the, the cost of preparing for this, it, it, it's really not onerous. It's a very <coughs> modest amount of money to put these things in place, whether it's power of attorney, healthcare proxy, the homestead, the, the irrevocable trust, we're not talking big dollars not, to get this accomplished. And, it, and you're always, you, it, in all of those documents, I always describe to, to people, I say, you know, really what I do, although it's not a good comparison, I sell insurance, right? I can give you some tools, right, that are gonna be able to avoid some significant costs if certain things happen down the line, right? Now, you, you have to weigh it out. You know, what's the, wor what's the value of that insurance versus the risk, right. right, that something right. might happen later yeah. on. And every person, you know, people will often say, we, we, you know, well, what do I need for documents? And, and the answer really is, so tell me about, tell me your story, right? Tell me what, what your situation is, because that's gonna vary. It's really gonna, right. if you've got a disabled child, if you've got, there are so many of those variables, right? Yeah. But that's the big issue as people get older. They worry about the nursing home sure. stuff. Sure, sure. Yeah. So let me ask a question. We, we've never discussed this, and I think we, we've all either gotten the, uh, the junk mail or we've seen Tom Selleck on a commercial talking about reverse mortgages. Reverse what's, mortgages. What's the deal with that? What is, uh, what's the, is there an upside to that? Is there a you know, downside? It, it, so in, 
It's a great question. This issue comes up a lot. I find a lot of people who are just totally opposed to even thinking about a reverse mortgage because they're persuaded that a reverse mortgage is not really a mortgage. It's something else. That if they're doing a reverse mortgage, that means they're giving the bank or whoever their house. Not the case. Not the case. I, for I strongly recommend reverse mortgages for folks who are getting older, uh, who own a house, but don't have a big pile of extra cash, right, and are losing sleep about that, right? And as, I, as you know, I, my motto is, the goal of my work is to help people sleep at night. If you're not losing sleep, don't worry about it. But if you're in that situation, if Frank's dead and you're Mary and you've got the house, which you bought you know, 40 years ago for peanuts, and now it's, it's in Ashland, it's worth $400,000, $500,000. You're living on the Social Security check, right? And you've got a little cash, $50,000, $100,000, $200,000, but not a lot of cash. And you're saying, oh my God, you know, this is okay for now, but you know, what if I need home care? What if I need people to help me out at home? What if the boiler blows up, you know, what if, right? If you're worried about that, that's when it's time to think about getting a reverse mortgage. Now, you can get a reverse mortgage uh, as long as you are at least 62 years old. Um, the amount that will be given to you in that reverse mortgage gets calculated based on the value of your house and your age. So the younger you are, <clears throat> the smaller the percentage of the value of the house that they'll give you. The older you are, the bigger the percentage. For that reason, I would often tell people, until recently, you know, you, well, the reverse mortgage will always be available to you while you're at home. Um, you may want to wait to get it, right? S uh, more recently, though, the, the terms of these reverse mortgages have changed so that if you, if you get the reverse mortgage and you haven't pulled all of the money out that you could borrow, the amount that you can still borrow, the unused amount, increase still increase will increase every year, typically by two and a half percent. So there's less incentive now to wait, right? So you can have right. the thing. So the and now the way the reverse mortgage works, though, it, it's a line. First of all, it's a line of credit. It is it is the same thing as a home equity loan. Okay. Exactly the that same. That was thing. my next question. So you can you you can take out you're taking out a, a, a lump of money as opposed to monthly withdrawals. Oh, or or you, no, you can do it either you way. Can do it either you can way. do it either way. So, you, so it will be structured typically. So say, once again, say that Frank's dead and I'm Mary, or say it's Frank and Mary, and they're in their eight, they're 80, they've got a little bit of cash aside, they want to do this. I'll tell them, okay, so, so what you want to do is you're going to give this company, just like you would at the bank, you're going to give this company a promissory note, a promise to pay them back whatever you've borrowed. They're going to say in return, you can borrow up to this given amount. So it's exactly the same as a home equity okay. loan, right? Yep. The difference, though, is that when you take out the money, at the end of the month, the end of the following month, there'll be interest that is owed. And by the way, the interest rates on reverse mortgages are right now like almost exactly the same as the interest rates on a, on a, uh, conve on a conventional, conventional fixed mortgage. rate or yeah. a regular mortgage. Yeah. But if you don't pay the interest at the end of the month on the amount that you've borrowed, only, and you're only paying interest on the amount that you borrowed, just like, a, just like a home equity loan, then at the end of the month, that interest gets added in to the, to the principal that you owe. And so the following month, the bill goes up by this little tiny amount equal to that increase in the principal. Right. That payment, instead of having payments that are owed every month, which is the, you know, the great, the bane of an older person, yep. right? Because they don't have that cash flow. The payment is only owed when, A, you sell the house, or B, you die, and even in that case, only one year after you die. And if Frank and Mary both sign the reverse mortgage, it o it's only due one year after the second okay. person dies, right? Uh, or C, if you leave the house for 360 and, and remain vacant for 365 consecutive days. That's actually what it says in these reverse mortgages. And the reason why I say that that's what it says is all the reverse mortgages say the same thing. These reverse mortgages are all federally guaranteed by the Federal um, Housing Administration. And because they're guaranteed, FHA requires the rules always be the same. Okay, so, so those that are was rules. my next question. Yeah. Who provides uh, reverse mortgages? I'm assuming a mortgage company yeah. as opposed to a bank. 
and they are regulated by the government. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And most conventional banks won't, most because because the 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 entities that provide reverse mortgages have typically been specialized, right? But you know that Tom Selleck, whoever you want to call the other main thing that I that I suggest to people as I say, this is my opinion, right, in these situations, that if you want to sleep better, you can use this. But it doesn't hurt to call them. And it doesn't make any difference who you call. All of these mortgages, they're all federally regulated. The interest rates are almost exactly the same. Call any of them just to see how this works. Okay. Just to see how Good. it works. I'm glad we talked about that. It's yeah. just, you know, it always appeared to me to be uh, not a scam but borderline. But borderline. But, but, borderline. Oh, I just want to mention one other thing. Remember, this is simply like a mortgage. So when you go to pay this off, which you can do at any time, before or after you die, you know, your kids can pay this off, the amount you're paying is the amount you borrowed plus, plus the interest. interest. That's all. It isn't that they don't get your house, <laughs> right? Yeah. They get the amount that you're paying plus interest. And by the way, if that amount exceeds the value of the house, that's okay. No one's responsible for that remainder. Mm. These are federally guaranteed. That's why banks are willing to do it. Yeah. If the if if the if the amount owed exceeds the value, the federal government pays the extra. Right. Okay. Okay. So it looks like we're kind of winding down for yeah. our 2019 uh, uh, season, and I think we've had a good year. Oh, can I just a, mention one other thing? Because it's the end of the year. Yeah. Gifting. Gifting. Right. There is no limit to the amount that you can give. There is this myth that, that, that you can only give up to a given amount, which people kind of know is $15,000 per year per person. It used to be 10. That, and those numbers are only relevant if your total assets are greater than $11.4 million. So for most people here in Ashland, this isn't an issue. If, you, if your assets are less than that, you can give as much as you want at, to any child at any time. There's no gift tax. Receipt of a gift is not income, right? So if you're thinking about it, but you're thinking, oh, I got a cap of 15000 right. you don't. You don't. Okay, good. Okay. Good point. Glad you brought that up. Uh, so, again, end of 2019, uh, we're going to uh, um, work on our, our schedule of, of guests for next for year. For next year. Um, I think we had a, a really good collection of guests this year. Uh, we really kind of focused on, on the dementia component. Yep. Uh, but uh, for next year, I think we're going to expand into to other issues of, of senior concerns. and uh, Which will be exciting because you're the yeah. one who always finds the great guests. Well, it's, you know, we'll have a, um, probably some of the same guests, but yeah. uh, it, it will we'll bring in new people as well. I mean, there's a lot of issues. Housing being, uh, you know, just a primary concern for so many seniors. Uh, affordable housing. And uh, so we'll, we'll have, uh, we'll look forward to an exciting 2020. That'll be a lot of fun. Good. So thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in 2020 uh, with the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. Thank you very much.